Senate Foreign Relations Committee will meet on Thursday to debrief on the Chinese balloon incident. In the meantime, Democrats and Republicans have differing views on how the situation was handled. We sent a clear message to China that this is not acceptable. We protected civilians. We gained more intelligence while protecting our own sensitive information. Well, I can assure you that if we fly a balloon over China, they're going to shoot it down, and probably a lot sooner than we did. Meanwhile, China says they retain the right to respond further to the U.S. military action. So joining us this morning is the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee to talk about this, Congressman Gregory Meeks of New York. Congressman, you represent Queens. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for being here. Good to be with you. So, so, Congressman, this is a big deal. A lot of people were talking about this. A lot of people were nervous about it, right? Democrats praising the president for putting the safety of Americans first. But as you heard, some Republicans say the U.S. military should have acted sooner. So where do you stand on the matter and how it all kind of played out? Well, clearly for me, I stand with the military. I mean, the Republicans seem to be playing politics, but the experts in this, when to take it down, how to take it down, would be within the direction of the military. So, uh, you know... You can tell that the Republicans just want to find a political issue and not focus on the safety of Americans. They know that with what, what Biden has been doing, both with the economy and moving forward and what has been happening, especially on the House side, where nonsense has been going on for the first month. Uh, but um, clearly, if I'm going to, uh, and if we were serious about this, we would listen to the military, uh, and then we would go, as we will this week, to have our classified session mm. uh, with uh, uh, with the appropriate sources, uh, so that we know exactly what took place, what we've learned, etc. Uh, now that the balloon is down, yeah. uh, and I think that was the appropriate way to operate. Yeah, and what's a little unnerving is this wasn't the only one. A second Chinese surveillance balloon spotted over Latin America. So, what kind of impact do you think these two incidents will have on U.S. and China relations? Well, clearly there's tensions, as you know, that Secretary Blinken was on his way to China because the diplomacy dictate to try to calm things down. Uh, and I think that there has to be a continued dialogue and conversation. Remember, before uh, this, uh, this uh, balloon came over to the United States, it also crossed over Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we need to talk to the Canadians. And they're not, you know, talking the same rhetoric that some of the Republicans are. I think that we're going to be working collectively together in that regard. Uh, and then once we uh, have verified uh, what was in uh, that uh, and, and what kind of um, uh, spy balloon it was and what kind of information it has, uh, we will move accordingly. So, you know, just to kind of button this up before we move on to the next topic, was there any threat or, or do Americans have anything to worry about? New Yorkers have anything to worry about? Because it does seem kind of out of the ordinary that a we haven't really heard of balloons floating over the country before recently. So what's the threat level? Well, clearly the military said that there was not a threat. This is not the first time. Uh, I'm told that uh, there had been similar balloons flown over uh, and hit our boundaries uh, three other times, uh, you know, uh, during the Trump administration yeah. as well as uh, uh, earlier. So the assessment as far as a threat there never was a threat based upon the military's uh, assessment. Okay. Uh, you know, there are satellites that are out there that also are trying to obtain information that, uh, but from what I understand, and I'm going to, as I said, I'll have a mm -hmm. classified briefing later this week, uh, Americans were never at stake, and the information, if any, that they received was not anything of a vital. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, let's talk about the, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. You just lost a member last week when Republicans... Uh, voted to remove Il excuse me, Ilhan Omar from her post due to her comments regarding Israel. So did Congresswoman Omar get due process, do you think, or do you think this was some sort of a political stunt by a Speaker it's, Kevin McCarthy? It's clearly a political stunt. It's one of the things that he had to commit to, to the uh, extreme uh, mega uh, Republicans that he gave uh, a lot of commitments to in order to uh, become a Speaker after 15 votes. Uh, it's clearly, uh, you know, uh, a revenge piece. Uh, Ilhan Omar, uh, you know, made statements that I did not agree with, uh, but she's apologized for it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, there's several other Republicans that made statements uh, that are anti-Semitic and never apologized for mm -hmm. it. And you cannot compare uh, what uh, they often say, well, look, the Democrats had 
uh, suspended uh, a few Republicans. Those Republicans, when we were in charge, they threatened the life of other members of Congress. That's a whole different threshold. Yeah. There's a difference. Uh, when you threaten uh, other members' lives, uh, that's where you draw the line. So comparing Ilhan, uh, for example, to the Congresswoman, I don't like to name names, but, you know, she's from Georgia, uh, that uh, is like comparing apples yeah. to oranges. Uh, more locally, you know, it's another day, another scandal surrounding Congressman George Santos. And that brings us to this intense scrutiny that's under George Santos right now, right? He serves in your neighbor, neighboring district in parts of Queens. Another ethics complaint filed against him by a former aide. There's news this morning, right, that there's uh, sexual assault allegations placed against him as well. What's next now for the embattled congressman, um, in your view? Next is getting him out of Congress and possibly going to jail. Uh, I think that the Eastern District uh, Attorney's Office is investigating. Uh, I'm told that uh, the Ethics Committee was investigating, but the Eastern <laughs> District told them to hold off while they're doing theirs. Uh, if he was smart, I think that he would resign and prepare uh, his defense for what I believe will be charges coming after him. Uh, clearly, uh, the latest poll showed us just about 70 percent of the individuals uh, in that district do not want him there that he got elected based upon a fraud. Uh, it would seem to me, if you're going to suspend anybody and keep them out of everything, it would be him that Speaker McCarthy should be focused on. But uh, I think it's a matter of time now uh, before, because every day, every day, there is something with this guy, and, uh, and, and, and that has to come to an end. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. Members of the Congressional Black Caucus uh, met with President Biden last week to discuss the George Floyd Policing Act following the funeral of Tyree Nichols in Memphis. So President Biden will be addressing police reform tomorrow during the State of the Union speech, and Tyree Nichols' parents will actually be there. So what do you think it's going to take for Congress to actually pass this bill? Well, I know that uh, Senator Booker uh, and Senator Scott from South Carolina have resumed talks. Uh, and I'm hoping that those talks become fruitful uh, and that we can have a vote in both the House and the Senate. You know, last in the 117th Congress, the House of Representatives passed the George Floyd Police Act twice, uh, and we could not get the votes uh, that was necessary from the Republicans in the Senate, and so therefore negotiations broke down. It is my hope that uh, this time, based upon the makeup of the House, that the Senate can come up uh, initially with a proposal. Uh, it's um, dependent upon uh, uh, Senator Booker and Senator Scott to continue to have this dialogue and conversation. And then if they can come up with an agreement, this time bring it to the House. Mm. And my hope would be then we can pass it in the House and get something on the president's desk. We will see, right, to be continued. Congressman Meeks, appreciate you being here this morning to talk about a host of issues. Uh, you're welcome back anytime, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me.